In Module 6, Lesson 2, students will learn to display a data distribution. What I would like my students to do first is read the classwork example. Hit pause, read the whole thing, and when you're done, hit play. And we'll go back and evaluate the important parts of the reading. Mia completed several steps um, in the statistics uh, in statistics to help her solve the question that she posed, okay? Step one, she posed a question, okay? And I'm gonna underline it, and I hope you do too. What are the heart rates of the students in my sixth grade class? She posed a statistical question. It's gonna have a lot of different answers, and she's gonna be able to graph that. The second step, she started to collect the data. And I'm gonna circle that and write step two. Okay, so she went into her class and she collected the data of 22 students and herself. Okay, and here's the data presented. Okay, step three requires students to think about how they're going to display the data that they collected. Okay, and some things that I would underline. In this module, you are going to learn about dot plots, histograms, and box plots. But in this lesson specifically, you are going to be learning about dot plots. Okay? And that is step three. She decided to make a dot plot. Okay? So let's look at the data she presented. And it's right here. There's several things I like about Mia's work. She has a title. She has a label underneath her numbers. Okay? looks like she counted by twos here. It's beautiful work. I would like you now to watch my video or keep your eyes on my screen, but flip your page to the back. There are several questions that I'm going to go over with you, okay, to make sure you understand what you're doing, okay? Question one, what was the heart rate for the student with the lowest heart rate? Well, you look at your dot plot and you look at the lowest number on the dot plot and it's right here. So question number one, the lowest heart rate is going to be 79. Okay, number two, what was the heart rate for the student with the highest heart rate? Well, that's going to be your maximum over here, okay, and that's going to be 90. Question three, how many students had a heart rate greater than 86? Well, greater than 86 means it can't be 86, okay? So I'm going to draw a line there, and I have to count all the dots greater than 86. It's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Five students have a heart rate greater than 86. Question 4. What fraction, ooh, I love fractions, of the students had a heart rate less than 82? Okay, so you want something less than 82, but not including it, okay? I'm going to erase my other marks here just in case it's confusing anyone. So there are one, two students who have heart rates less than 82 out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. You could scale this fraction down to, to its equivalent of 111. Okay, question five. What was the most common heart rate? The most common heart rate in a dot plot is going to be located by the highest amount of dots. That is going to be found right here. 83 beats per minute is the highest heart rate. Question six. What heart rate describes the center of the data? Okay, this one's kind of a tricky question. But when I think of center, here's how I... I kind of cross them out one at a time to get to the middle. There's two here, so I'll cross those two out. I'll cross two out here. There's four here, so I'll cross four out on this side. And then if you do one, 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 the center of the data is really in between these two. So I could take 84, I would take 85, and for my purposes today, I'm going to write the center of the data as an average of those two middles, or 84.5. Question 7. What heart rates are the most unusual? 
I'm going to write down a couple. I'm going to write 79. It only happens once. I'm going to write down 81. I'm going to write 89. And I'm going to write 90. I'm not going to choose. Nah, maybe I should choose this one. I would be okay if you selected 87 or not. But this seems to have a large number of dots, so this actually seems like a common area to me. Okay, question eight. If me as teacher asked with the typical heart rate for sixth graders in the class, what would you tell me as teacher? I would accept a lot of different answers. I would accept 83 because it's the highest. I'd ex accept 84 or 85 also because they are the center of the data. So I'm going to write down. I would probably say I'm going to choose 84, but like I said earlier, I would pick any of the ones that you I just listed. Number 9, add a dot plot. On the dot plot, add a dot for Mia's heart rate. And you would have to go back to your reading to figure out what Mia's heart rate is. So I would like you to do that and add it to her. She had an, uh, 80 beats per minute. So you would find 80 and you would add it to the front of your dot plot. Uh, last question, number 10. How does Mia's heart rate compare with the heart rates of the other students in the class? Okay, her 80, her heart rate, if you're looking at this piece of data in relation to all the other ones, she has a pretty um, low heart rate. I mean, it's well below our middle, okay, or our median. She's on definitely the lower end of the scale. Okay, so for number 10, that's what I would say. Okay, let's keep going on with the lesson. Hopefully you answered all those questions on your sheet. Okay, right now I would like you to stop and I would like you to read example two, seeing the spread in dot plot. After you've read that, I would like you to take the following notes. Okay, this second part of the lesson explains the spread of dot plots. And there's one word that's really important when we're talking about spreads. And the word is range. Please write it down. If you played Khan Academy today, you realize that the range is the maximum minus the minimum. And it really helps us see how far our data is spread. Okay? So Mia um, asked people how many books, how many textbooks are in the desks of sixth graders. Okay. The lowest number of textbooks in the desks of 6th graders is 5, and the highest amount is 8. If we calculated the range for this spread, it has a, it has a range of 3, which is not a very varied spread. You only have a couple of numbers in our data here. So let's take a look at the next data spread. Okay, this was um, a survey on heights of sixth graders, okay? So in order to talk about the spread, we're again going to use the word range. Our lowest or our minimum data point is 49, and our highest data point height is 66. So that's a very wide range, okay? When you calculate the range of the data, it is spread over 17 um, numerical data pieces, okay? That's a pretty big range, okay? So let's flip to the next page and answer some questions. The questions on this page want us to look at the questions and match them to the spread of data. So I'm just going to keep my page here so we can look at the data points and you guys can hopefully read the questions from the top, okay? Question 11. It asks for what are the ages of fourth graders in our school? Well, if you think about fourth graders, they can really only be one of two ages. They can either be nine or 10. So when you look at all four of these, A, B, C, and D, it's pretty obvious that question 11 is gonna match dot plot A. Question two, or 12, I'm sorry. What are the heights of the players on the eighth grade boys basketball team? Heights are probably going to be pretty spread out. So I'm going to look at the three plots I have. This one is from 0 to 8. I'm not sure that that would um, be talking about um, heights because 8 feet tall would be crazy. Okay, and 0 feet tall, not a possibility. 
I'm also going to eliminate dot plot C because these are not numbers typical of height. It must be dot plot D. And these are more um, typical heights, 58 inches to 73 inches. So dot plot B or dot plot D is going to ma match question 12. 13, how many hours do sixth graders in our class watch TV on a school night? Well, I hope it's not dot plot B, because I hope no one's watching eight hours of television. But I'm going to look at question 14. How many different languages do students in our class speak? I'm assuming, hmm, this is a pretty hard pack. I'm going to let you guys pack and we're going to have a debate in class about it tomorrow. See who's right. I hope you stay with the video in order to answer the Educanon questions, and I hope you took notes. Thank you very much.